now away from the project. Uh, John News has said to broadcast its latest investigative report detailing the stealing of cocoa by produce clerks of licensed cocoa buyers. Today, after two years of legal tussle, Missing Kilos explores how officials of state and privately licensed buying companies adjust their weighing skills to steal as much as 100 kilos from a single farmer. In the first part of a three-piece documentary, John uses investigative journalist Quetinate unveils a national plunder of the country's farmers. After weighing my cocoa, I have brought the cocoa to the first shed at Amokwa. A man in his early 40s offers to buy the cocoa. He volunteers to carry the cocoa. He takes me to a mad thatched house. He doesn't own his own shed. He weighs the cocoa at home. A bag of 70 kilogram cocoa now weighs 64 kilogram on his scale. He's demanding an extra five kilogram, despite stealing six kilograms through the adjustment of the scale. In this community, it will be impossible to find a shed that will weigh cocoa at 64 kilograms. Is there a depot at Aninasi? Or do they also weigh the bag at 70 kilograms? It won't be weighed at 64 kilograms, but you need to factor other costs such as transportation. I'm at the border town of Elubu. I want to test how pervasive this canker is in this region. This 6.4 foot tall purchasing clerk works with private licensed buying company Fudo. His shed looks like an old church block. It hasn't been whitewashed for a long while. He's taking stock of several bags of cocoa here, but he stops to attend to us. He drops the bag of cocoa on an old rusty scale. The 70 kilo cocoa now weighs 56 kilos. 14 kilograms is stolen on every bag brought to this shed. Is that your brother? That's an excerpt of the documentary that will be airing tonight at 8.30 p.m. You don't want to miss it, but let's have some conversation on the back of this. We're joined by Zoom by the country director of St. Ghana, George Osebimpe. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your time here on Newsdex. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Fifi Boafo, who is in the uh, office of the CEO of the chief executive of Coco Board. Mr. Boafo, thank you very much for your time here on Newsdex as well. Uh, but let me start with you, Mr. Bimpe. Uh, your organization also carried out a similar uh, exercise uh, along the Aguna East communities. Uh, surprised at this development? No, really, um, we are not surprised um, because, I mean, um, we, we released our report last year. Mm. Um, and so this is a confirmation of a widespread um, practice that um, you know, crooks like the guy that you saw in the video have been using to cheap, uh, cheat the farmers out of the toils that and the you know the, the drudgery that they have to go through mm. um, every day. Um, I must say that when we issued the report, we had the cocoa board in attendance, and apparently the cocoa board had put in place um, uh, measures. Um, we, you know, they were working together with um, the standard board, as a standard authority at that area, yeah, to ensure that they, 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 they introduced in October this year, mm -hmm. they introduced, um, you know, electronic uh, weighing skills. That we, we are hoping that if 
they roll them out will resolve these uh, issues. But you see, in as much as um, there is some sense of optimism about that, this will not be the first time that um, measures are going to be introduced to curb that practice. So we are hoping that this time around, we will find a lasting solution to that. But um, in as much as the act is condemnable, I think that even the fact that some people had to fight multimedia for this um, video um, documented to be held uh, on for about two years means that there is um, a kind of cartel behind all these activities. And the problem, I think it is not an isolated one. It's widespread. And so some heads must rule in terms of at least those that were caught on the camera. And I think that the security agencies might take, might, should take this in up, have them arrested, put them before court, at least to serve as a deterrent to anybody who might try anything when we have the electronic um, scale, weighing scales introduced later this year. And we'll talk a bit more about that because Fifi is on the line. I'm sure he can give us some more detail on how this uh, would work. Fifi, I'll come to you shortly. But uh, Mr. Bimpe, you are saying that this is not the first time uh, measures have been introduced. What other measures were introduced and uh, in your estimation, did they work? Yeah, we, I recall that in our research that we conducted, um, there was some revelation. Um, in some of the communities, the farmers had agreed to leave the weighing skills in the um, house of their executives. It turned out that the executives were later compromised. And so they were in collusion with the, um, the, the buying companies or the, if you like the the executive or the catch, as we call it in the villages. And so um, they, they, they connived and have the uh, skills adjusted so that in the, in, the, in the minds of the farmers, they thought that they had a gatekeeper who was fighting for their interests. But it turned out that they were actually betrayed mm. um, through the activities of the people, the very people who are supposed to work with them. So this, uh, and I'm hoping that the new um, electronic weighing scales that I am told cannot be tempered with. We ha will have to manage it in a, a, in a very transparent way, such that nobody, whether you know, uh, whether that person purports to represent the interests of the farmers, will connive with the uh, the secretaries or the buying companies mm. to dupe the farmers. Okay, okay. that uh, is one uh, typical example well. that we came. Up. Mm. Let me go to Fifi Boafo on the other line. Thank you very much, Fifi. I I'm sure this is not new to you, but seeing that we have evidence now on tape, uh, how, how is Cocoa Board reacting to this? Well, thanks for the opportunity. Let me say that um, it is not new to us, like you indicated, and uh, this is a bit belated. I say belated in the sense that uh, we have conducted uh, some investigations and that's more comprehensive than what uh, Joy News is doing now. Comprehensive in the sense that um, 2018, the chief executive went round and uh, it, it, it was revealed actually because we went round with uh, weighing stones, uh, paid some surprise visit to some of these licenses buying companies and then we realized that these licenses buying companies were cheating the cocoa farmers. For this reason, Cocoa Board Commission the uh, standards authority to do some sort of uh, a nationwide audit to assess what exactly these license buying companies are doing. After the audit, uh, we have a comprehensive report. We realize that these license buying companies were cheating the cocoa farmers from two kilos as high as 11 kilos in some cases. Uh, we've had some meetings with these uh, license buying companies and then we've provided them with a copy of the report for them to know the extent uh, of the cheating that is going on across the country. There have been some punitive measures which the law that governs uh, skills and weighing in our country and the punitive measures have applied. Of course, there was some reluctance on the part of some of these license buying companies, but indeed, we ensure that um, the laws uh, applied. However, we have the view that it would not be enough for us to continue applying sanctions as and when we conduct these searches and then, then uh, it comes out that these people have been cheating the farmers. Mm. So what we've done uh, going forward is just like the gentleman from Sem Ghana indicated, is to introduce electronic skills. The electronic skills, they do not have the opportunity to 
temper with it, just like they do with these manual skills. So going forward, these electronic skills, our expectation is that beginning this next uh, cocoa season, we'll introduce them and the electronic skills will be able to make this whole age-long practice of cheating cocoa farmers using their skills a thing of the past. Uh, let me say that uh, the, uh, the board has given approval for this very action. Procurement process is ongoing. And uh, it is our belief and expectation that we'll be able to find a solution to this problem, which has confronted our industry for long. Mm. Let me quickly address the concern he raised with regards to whether or not this will be able to be the panacea to the problem we face. Yes, and that is very important. Of course, Yes, we admit that every introduction of a policy or a measure comes with its own set of challenges. But uh, this is clearly something different from the example he cited. The example he cited whereby it was the same old skills, except that different people were trusted uh, to make sure that it, is, it does not find its way into the hands of these rooks who go and then manipulate it to the disadvantage of the cocoa farmers. Uh, these skills are not the ones uh, which you have the opportunity to say that, okay, at this point in time, I am adjusting it by this percentage or by this margin. So it is our belief that this will come to be a big relief for the cocoa farmers. Um, the chief executive has consistently, I think the last uh, year, been talking about the introduction of these new skills, which we believe will solve the problem our farmers uh, face. And... Anywhere we've been to where we had farmers rally and the chief executive talk about this introduction, the excitement on the faces of the cocoa farmers is a clear demonstration that, yes, they have a strong belief that this will be able to come and relieve them of such a burden they face. So trust me, this system will come as uh, an initiative that is coming to solve the problem. I, so I, I course, think the concern that Mr. Bimpe raised is that who is going to handle these skills that you're talking about, such that whoever uh, will be handling it, we can be sure of um, where the person, uh, whose allegiance the person is, you know, uh, having, and such that the interest of the cocoa farmer will be, will, will be secured in this case. Okay, so the, the, the concern Mr. Bimpe was talking about, I, I'm just making the point that probably, uh, it's, he does not understand fully how these electronic skills work compared to the manual skills. With the manual skills, yes, depending on who has control over it or who is monitoring it, then you'll be able to adjust it. Mm. But the, with the electronic skills, it does not matter who has it. Okay. You are unable to uh, temper with it. So the point is, uh, yes, Cocoa Board is facilitating the procurement of these uh, skills and then the, the license by companies will be using it because they are the people who work for them. Okay. But the good news is that they do not have the power to manipulate it, whether it's in their possession mm. or it's in the possession of another person. And, and we hope that this will work. But uh, you must appreciate that um, this is a documentary that was done in 2018. It's been held on because of legal issues. And so when you say that you have carried out a much more uh, comprehensive uh, uh, audit, I think that you should hold on because it's a three piece documentary. Uh, but as far as the audits that you conducted is concerned, was it made public? And you talk about sanctioning of some people. Uh, how many people have been sanctioned? And what kind of sanctions are we talking about? Okay, I've not taken anything away from uh, Joy News from this documentary. Of course, it's a good piece that has been done. But of course, you all appreciate the fact that resources available to Joy News and Cocoa Board as a regulator, the resources are not the same. And of course, uh, we have different mandates in this regard. So... A survey or a research work done by a media house trying to uncover this, just suppose it would what would do as a regulator, ours would be more expensive. And I appreciate the facts and comments during this for this very initiative. But the point I was just trying to make is that sure, we have done extensive nationwide work. Of course, the work that was done by Joy News uh, has been held for two years. So probably coming out at this time. Uh, uh, what has been done from the two years up to this stage uh, has overtaken what the work you have done, but mm. still indeed a commendable act which you've done. V very so well. On the, on the specific point... issue of the audits, I just want to know uh, if this was made public and how many people were sanctioned, because you, you, you talked okay. about that. Um, it, 
the chief executive has spoken to it publicly on a number of occasions as to the work that was done by Standards Authority. And also to add that um, there are a number of licensed buying companies which were found uh, guilty of this act, and Standards Authority applied the sanctions. What sanctions? There are fees you are supposed to pay if you are found to be cheating cocoa farmers. And uh, that's what Standards Authority ensured that was done. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fifi Boafo. He is in the office of the Chief Executive for Cocoa Board. We're also joined by uh, George Bimper, who is the Country Director for Send Ghana, on this uh, story that we are bringing to you. It's our latest investigative piece on uh, cocoa buying in the country, uh, a nationwide plunder of cocoa farmers. The full piece, the first part, is tonight at 8.30 p.m.